forget there's still one big three game series remaining at uh, Three River Stadium. The Pirates continue to battle for the Eastern Division title. George Foster and the New York Mets will be in Pittsburgh Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights, September 27th, 28th, and 29th. Game time each night is 7.35. So why not give the Pirate Ticket Office a call right now? 323-1150. Reserve your tickets, Visa, MasterCard, or American Express for what could be the most crucial three-game home series of the year, the Mets and the Bucks, for the 1983 final regular season homestand at Three River Stadium. New pitcher for the Montreal Expos, it's Chris Welch. And on the year, Chris Welch with a record of 0-2 and, and earned an average of 4.63. He's appeared in 15 games since joining the Montreal Expos. He's 0-1 for Montreal, no saves, and an earned run average in an Expo uniform of 5.36. And overall for this year, Chris Welch coming on for the 23rd time. Chris Welch purchased by the uh, Montreal Expos from San Diego. That was uh, back on May the 4th. Jason Thompson will lead off the Pirate third. It'll be Thompson, Easler, and Pena to face the left-hander Welch. Pirates five, and the Expos one. Jason Thompson walked in the first inning. So far, seven for 16 on the trip. Had a good game Tuesday in New York, and Jason told Jim on the radio postgame show that it was a big load off his shoulders getting the good game on Tuesday because he spent a very sleepless night Monday night because of the error committed against the Mets. Inside, one and one. Chris Welch from Wilmington, Delaware, born in Wilmington, now makes his home in Cincinnati, Ohio, was with the San Diego Padres 81 82 and First month of 83. Two balls and a strike. Chris Welch had come up originally in the New York Yankees organization, was traded by the Yankees to San Diego in April of 81. Bouncer to the mound. And Welch fires to Al Oliver, one down. Pirates five, Expos one, we're in the third inning. A bit different delivery from Welch. He kind of slings the ball to home plate. He does. Watch his arm. Watch his throwing arm as he almost extends it fully and, as you said, slings it, whips it home. Mike Easler with a grand slam in the first inning. Pirates five and the Expos one. The Easler Grand Slam made it four to nothing. And then Pena followed with a solo home run to make it five zip. The Expos got a run on the bottom of the first inning. Two out triple by Oliver driving in Tim Raines. Mike Easler now has three career Grand Slams, two this year plus the one in May of last year. One ball, one strike. Take a look at the delivery of Welsh. We talked about him slinging it. Get a look at his arm. He brings it well behind his head and then kind of whips it around. Yeah, whips it past Easler, but it's two balls and a strike. Hmm. Easler swings and misses, and it's two and two. Would you do me a favor? Sure. My pitching book just went out the. Uh, it's on that ledge out there. Would you crawl out there and? Uh, uh, no, I won't. Good. 153 games. <laughs> uh, worth we of can pitching stats out there on the ledge. <laughs> All the way to it too. It's not even windy up here either. <laughs> How'd you do that? Something about if you put it on a slanted <laughs> object, it'll <laughs> gravity will take it. Where is it? Hey Jim, see if Jim Worker will. Uh, <laughs> I'm not climbing down there. My book is how <laughs> valuable that is to me. <laughs> two and two. Hey, uh, Jerry, get down there and get that. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Easler down on strikes. That is strikeout number one for Chris Welch. And it is 
the second out of the inning. Top of the third with the Pirates leading 5-1. to one. I do know how valuable that book is to you. I've seen you slave over that book on the airplane many nights. Mm -hmm. We'll get it. Thank you. Here's Tony Pena. Tony homered in the first inning. His 14th home run of the year. Takes inside ball one. Dodgers got three runs in the third inning. L.A. leads Montreal four to nothing. Leads Atlanta, excuse me. Mont L.A. leading Atlanta four to nothing in the third. See how shook up I am over that break? There's a strike. It's one and one. <laughs> if we don't get that back soon, you won't be worth a darn the rest of the night. <laughs> Here's Welts, a one-one pitch. And good fastball up and into Pena. Now Tony's going to step away from home plate. Sanderson was trying to get by on some breaking pitches, and when he did come with the fastball, first time up, Tony Pena was really setting on it, but uh, it's a little different with uh, Chris Welsh in there. He comes in with a breaking pitch, misses two and two. Pirates five runs on three hits, two of the hits, home runs. Five runs off starter Sanderson. Pena goes down and with a ground ball to shortstop Flynn. Over to Oliver. And the Pirates are retired. One, two, three in the third. A couple of ground outs and a strikeout for Chris Welch. Coming up for Montreal, the pitcher's spot is due up number one. Oliver completes the put out to end the Pirate third after two and a half. Pittsburgh five, Montreal one. The very first computers seemed as big as houses and so mysterious that for most of us, the computer was behind a closed door. But IBM was thinking how to make the computer more useful. And as one good idea led to another, it began getting smaller, faster, less expensive, and easier to use. Today, an IBM computer has reached a personal scale. A person can afford it. A person can put it anywhere. Office, home, or school. And a person can learn to use it with ease. IBM made its personal computer to help a person be more productive, to help a person be more creative. And those are good reasons for a person to feel good. The IBM personal computer. Call toll free for a store near you. I'm Larry O'Brien. And I'm John Gary. And we've moved our morning show to WHTX FM Stereo. 96 in your FM dial. We hope you'll move with us. That's Radio 96. Ray Tannehill and Patty Burns tonight at 11. Getting ready for the bottom of the third, the gentleman on the left with his arms folded, that's Lenny Yoakum, uh, scout with the Pittsburgh Pirates, and the gentleman on the right in the... Uh, Rain Jacket is uh, Fred Schaefer, scout with the Chicago White Sox. They're seated behind home plate. And a reminder, friends, that uh, Fred Schaefer and manager Chuck Tanner are co-hosts of the uh, golf tournament coming up Saturday, October 22nd, to benefit the Lawrence County unit of the American Heart Association. <laughs> what is that man doing? This is the uh, gentleman that we paid much money to walk the ledge to go out and get my uh, pitcher's book. Uh, we can get on with the game now. Here's uh, Chris Welch leading off the bottom of the third. <laughs> Swing and a miss, strike one. Pirates five, Expos one. Bottom of the third. Has that ever happened to you before? Not one of my, st my uh, stat books, but I did lose a scorecard one time in since was this year in Cincinnati. Is that right? It was the time that Jim Jim was away. Right. And uh, I was all alone in the booth. I had to rig up this contraption to get my scorecard back. Fouled away. Third base side. Hebner. And a foul ball. You know, Richie pulled up at that white line. I don't think he didn't have to. He is allowed to go over that white line to make a catch. He could have gone right to the edge. And you could see at the last second that he, he pulled up at that white line. Of course, the ball did hit the, uh, the edge of the dugout. To give you that phone number for the golf tournament coming up on Saturday, October 22nd. It'll be held at the Stonecrest Golf Course on Route 18 in Wampum, Pennsylvania. In the dirt, 
two and two. If you'd like to join us that Saturday, October 22nd, that'll be the Saturday after the World Series. You can call 658-8458. 658-8458. Perfect way to relax after we uh, wrap up a championship, right? That's right. You'd be certain that Chuck Tanner wasn't going to make any plans <laughs> before game seven. Tony Pena deals the signs. Roden deals the 2-2 pitch. And fouled away. The Bucks got five runs in the first inning. A grand slam for Easler, and then Pena with a home run. Expo's got a run on the bottom of the first. Fouled off count remains at two and two. If I keep losing these stat books like this, you and Jim are going to have to tie a little wire to my wrist like like mom used to do with the mittens, remember? Well, there's only nine games left in the regular season. Hang on, Lanny. I know it. I know it. Fouled away. After three innings of play in Atlanta, the Dodgers lead the Braves four to nothing. Jerry Royce against Len Barker. Nothing in yet on the Cardinals and Phillies. Bush Stadium in St. Louis, Steve Carlton against Joaquin Anduar. The Pirates, three games back of Philadelphia, nine to play. Jason Thompson. Unassisted put out, one away in the Montreal third. Now we'll go to the top of the batting order in Tim Raines. Pirates five, Expos one, last half of the third. Second game of this series tomorrow afternoon. Airtime on the radio uh, network for you, 2.05. John Candelaria against Bryn Smith. Range batting 2.99. Tenth best batting average in the league. Gloves by Roden, flipped to Thompson, two down. Good play by Rick. One of those kind of plays where you snag it and then you take a little deep breath because if it gets by him, it's probably in center field, but he was able to track it down. Hello, ball. Did you see the tape of the Oliver smash to Tacoby? No, I did not. Mm. That was the series last weekend at Pittsburgh. Bullet right back. And Teak said of the postgame show that night or that day that uh, it was more of a case of the ball just going in his glove rather than him actually catching the ball. The glove happened to be there. Strike one, breaking pitch, starting Brian Little off with a curveball. Little is over one. 5 1, Pirates on top, bottom of the third. Jason Thompson strolls to the base, and that's all for the Expos. Rick Roden has retired the last seven Montreal batters. Coming up in the fourth inning, it'll be the bottom third of the Pirate batting order. After three, it's Pittsburgh, five, Montreal, one. Razors between thick and good news. Hold it, boys. Schick has a new disposable that beats them both. New Schick disposable? Right. This new Schick disposable beats good news for sharpness. This Schick is sharper than good news? Yep, and Schick beats Bic for overall performance. You know she's right. Why fight it? Try the disposable that beats them both. The new Schick disposable. Participating advertisers in the next three innings are United Airlines. People who fly for a living fly United. Bell of Pennsylvania. And a Giant Eagle. If it's not a Giant Eagle, it's just a supermarket. After three here in Olympic Stadium, five runs for the Pirates. Three hits, no errors. For Montreal, one run, one hit, and no errors for the Expos tonight. The Bucks sending up the bottom third of their order against... 
Chris Welsh here in the bottom half of, uh, rather the top half of the fourth inning. Hebner, Barra, and Roden coming up. The hack hit a line drive to right field down the line his first time up. Great play by Terry Francona diving to his left to make the catch and retire Richie Hebner. Hebner's sharply hit ball coming after Mike Eastler had hit a grand slam home run and Tony Pena had followed with a solo home run. I want to catch up on some of our birthdays before it gets too late. Josephine Marino happy 98th birthday. Her birthday was Tuesday September the 15th. A birthday today for Harry Crespo 83 years old today. Happy birthday to him. I understand he never misses one of our pirate games on the network. Hebner takes a strike two balls and one strike. Nobody on and nobody out here in the top of the fourth five nothing the Pirates with five runs in the first. Pops it up foul territory. Bobby Ramos trying to get to it and can't. It bounces back onto the playing surface. So it's two and two. They have started in Bush Stadium St. Louis tonight. The Phillies did not score on the top of the first. The Cardinals coming to bat. So Hebner is still alive. Two balls and two strikes. Richie 13 for 27 in the month of September. What a job he has done. Grounds it. Fair ball. Oliver makes the play. On to Welsh, one out. The umpire waited to make sure the ball was in fair territory, but then it was called fair, and Oliver went to Welsh. Hebner went for an outside pitch. Not much he could do, but beat it into the ground. Just inside the bag, it's a fair ball. So says the first base umpire, Doug Harvey. Oliver's toss is in plenty of time to get Richie Hebner. So three to one, if you're scoring with us. The batter now will be Dale Barra. Barra has hit safely in 18 of his last 20 games. Has one home run and four RBIs against Montreal this year. Dale is 11 for 49. Flied to center his first time up. Batting 255 here with nine games remaining in the regular season. Two more with Montreal Saturday and Sunday afternoon. Back to three rivers Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday for the Mets. Down the line, it'll be foul and out of play. And then we wind up the regular season in Philadelphia next Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday. And everything could be on the line when we get to that series. Let's hope so anyway. The Bucks have won eight of their last 11 and still lost some ground. An early happy 94th birthday to Mrs. Catherine Swift of McKeesport. Her birthday's coming up on the 29th. Hope she has a great day on the 29th. Tomorrow will be the 59th wedding anniversary of uh, Mr. and Mrs. Elmer J. Perchenether of Glenshaw. Best wishes to them and a happy birthday for today to Amy Hitzkowitz. His birthday is tonight. They count on Dale Barrett two and two. Doug Harvey looking into the pirate dugout. Second time we've had an umpire jawing with a pirate on the bench. Could be that the Bucks thought that was a foul ball. Barra hits it into center field. Andre Dawson. Second out in the inning. So twice Barra has flied to center. Two outs and nobody on here in the top of the fourth. The Pirates leading by four. It's five to one. will be the pitcher Rick Roden. Rick fly to center his first time up. Two walks and a single loaded the bases in the first and Mike Eastler with one out. It is second grand slam of the season. Called strike to Roden. Tony Pena followed that with his 14th home run a solo shot. And that accounted for the five first inning pirate runs. Al Oliver's triple chased home Tim Raines from Montreal in the bottom of the first. Roden 
drives it foul outside of third. Bill Madlock still out with that tendon injury. That happened in St. Louis on the 5th of September. Another fly ball to center field. No problem for Andre Dawson. The Bucks are no problem in the fourth. They go in order for the second straight inning. In the Montreal half of the fourth, it'll be Dawson to lead it off, then Al Oliver and Tim Wallach. As we go to the bottom half of inning number four, the Pirates have whipped out to a 5-1 lead over the Expos. I take my hat off to the best little breaded shrimp in Texas. To the best little breaded shrimp in, in Indiana. At Long John Silver's, people love new breaded shrimp. Everybody's raving about our new breaded shrimp platter. Just look at all those golden breaded shrimp. To the best little breaded shrimp in Georgia. To the best little breaded shrimp at the best little price in the USA. At Long John Silver's, people love new breaded shrimp. One granola bar, this moist, this chewy, is 100% natural. Nature Valley Chewy Granola Bars, the chewy breakthrough. Bits of real red apples, or big plump raisins, creamy peanut butter you can see, or real chocolate chocolate chips. No additives, no preservatives. 100% natural. Not all chewy granola bars are. Check the label. Nature Valley Chewy Granola Bars, the chewy breakthrough. Roden ahead 5-1 as he gets set for the bottom half of the fourth inning. He'll face the heart of the order for Montreal. The Expos losing a doubleheader to the Cardinals last night right here in Olympic Stadium. 9-7 and 7-1 were the scores. The Phillies have moved on to St. Louis where they did not score in the top half of inning number one against St. Louis. The last score we had from Atlanta. The Dodgers were out in front 4-0 over the Braves. We'll keep you posted on those two races as the night goes along. Delighted to have you with us tonight on our final regularly scheduled game for 1983. We'd of course love to see you during playoff time. I'm John Sanders along with Jim Rooker and Lanny Frateri. We are live here at Olympic Stadium. The Cardinals no runs in the bottom half of the first so they'll head into the second scoreless in St. Louis. Andre Dawson down on strikes his first time up. Battled Roden. They went to three and two before Rick finally got him. Shows bunt. The pitch misses outside. Are we hooked up? Yes. I think we are. Up. We've done some birthday greetings, and I want to be not the first because it's been a long day to say a very happy birthday to Jim Rooker, who's celebrating his today. Happy birthday to you. It's been a long 30 years. <laughs> it's longer every year, doesn't it? <laughs> Let Lanny buy you some cheese nachos for your birthday? Close your eyes and tell me what you see. Out back. <laughs> That's same, what I got. Nothing. Same, same thing he got you last year, right? <laughs> yeah. Two balls and one strike to Andre Dawson. The Bucks with a five spot in the first, leading 5-1 here in Olympic Stadium. There's a strike, two and two. You know, we commented at the time, Rook, that the fans were shell-shocked after the home runs, and when Francona made a great play, uh, they almost gave him a standing ovation here. Well, that was a tremendous play. You know, how many outfielders do you see with your team down five to nothing make a play like that? They're not, not very many of them are going to dive. Check swing foul ball count remains two and two. Well I don't feel bad about Lanny not getting me. I got up this morning looked in the mirror and sang happy birthday and it shattered. <laughs> <laughs> so much for that huh. Yeah that's enough. Andre Dawson is batting 344 against the Pirates this year. He's 21 for 61. Let's take another look at that play by Terry Francona because it was a beauty, Rook. Well, let's watch here, and, and he gets a good jump on the ball. But look at this. Dives out, first of all. Okay, now we've seen the catch. What if he doesn't make that play? And if Andre Dawson is not there to back him up, 
Well, it's That's at least three. three. Maybe, yeah, at least three. And maybe an inside the parker. But what a play by Francona. That is just absolutely marvelous. Did he go? Yes, he did. Second time in the ball game. Andre Dawson down on strikes. Roden now has three in the game. 147 on the year. And each time he strikes out a batter, that pushes his own career season total to a new record. And not getting an easy man in Andre Dawson. You know, I think it was after they played in Pittsburgh last week, John, that Dawson came out and said that he was tired of the Expos not fulfilling what they should do because of all the talent that they have. And Dawson, who is having a banner year for himself, a lot of others are not. But he has to be a little frustrated. Al Oliver, his triple in the first, drove in the Montreal run. He takes a strike and will pause five seconds for station identification on the Pittsburgh Pirate Television Network. KDK TV2, Pittsburgh. Two and one the count on Al Oliver. Hits it on the ground. Hebner cuts it off and throws him out. Every now and then you forget what a strong arm Richie Hebner has. He has got a rocket. Oliver decides to go the other way. He hits a good pitch here. You see Rick tailing that fastball and Hebner. Now watch how much time he takes. Look at this. He takes about four steps, knows that he has plenty of time, and then unloads it to Jason Thompson, and they get Oliver by a good two steps. There's the hack. Wallach takes down low ball one. The one thing about the hack, Richie always looks like he's having a good time, whether no matter what, especially when he's on the field. He just seems to enjoy the environment. He does. He's one of the kind of players that comes out there every day and, and has a good time. It's not as if it's very tedious and, and a boring kind of a job. You know, like you go to the park and say, oh, do I have to get dressed again? He really enjoys it. Other players, there are other players that don't. Kind of hard to figure out, isn't it? Well, yeah, it would be to me. Yeah. You did it for a number of years. Fouled out of play. Did it ever get boring to you? Well, I think when you're on a contending ball club year after year, that's where the fun still stays in the game, when you can go into August and September and be in a race. There you see Richie again. But when you're on a ball club that just struggles and struggles and you're not going anywhere, that's when it gets a little tougher. Right center field. Parker is there. And again, Rick Roden retires them one, two, three. Roden has sent down 10 batters in a row. We'll go to the fifth inning. The Pirates have the top of the order coming up, and Roden and the Bucks have the lead by four. Truck Blitz is on at your Dotson dealer now through October 2nd. He's tackling the competition with unheard of deals on any new Nissan truck. Rough, tough trucks with the most powerful standard engine in the class. Get a great deal on a new Nissan truck while the big 84 Truck Blitz is on at your Dotson dealers. Right, fellas? That means yes. Get 8.8% truck financing now, but only through September 30th at your Greater Pittsburgh Dotson dealers. Here we go with our next to last Giant Eagle home run sweepstakes inning of 1983 and our contestant is Jim Rooker. No it's not really. Somebody wrote that on my paper. Bernard Rolick of Pittsburgh is our contestant. If a pirate hits a home run here in the top half of the fifth Bernard will pick up $700 worth of Giant Eagle groceries plus certificates for 24 12 ounce cans of Pepsi free certificates redeemable at your grocer. To his third inning of work goes number 26, Chris Welsh. He has been perfect so far. Striking out one, a couple of fly balls, and three ground outs to knock down the first six batters he's faced. Marvell Wynn batting against him for the first time tonight. Marvell is 0 for 1 officially, walked and scored in the first. That's when the Pirates crossed the plate five times and they lead it 5 1. Good pitch on the corner. How about that right cross that Pulley throws? <laughs> I like that. We talked about it earlier. I asked Lanny if he'd ever KO'd anybody. If a catcher stands up too quick, he's in trouble. 
you get a rabbit punch behind the head. By the way, the Atlanta Braves scored two runs in the top of the fourth inning, John, and trail Los Angeles four to two. Atlanta has to. They're at that must-win situation right now against the Dodgers. And no score from St. Louis between the Cardinals and the Phillies as yet there in the second inning. We'll keep you posted on the action as we go along tonight. One ball and two strikes to Marvell win. Welsh wants a new baseball. Didn't like that one. Bernard Rolick of Pittsburgh is our Giant Eagle jackpot contestant. And remember, I said that we will have a winner tonight one way or the other because this is the last regularly scheduled game. We have had a special drawing and somebody's going to get the bucks no matter what. Well I think you already mentioned my name so I'll. Yeah you put I'll, your. I'll take it. You tried to get it last year and <laughs> came up empty remember. Ooh. Inside Marvell ducking out of the way it's two and two also at the end of the game our pirate broadcast crew will be selecting a pirate of the game. The Greater Pittsburgh Area Nissan Datsun dealers will donate $100 in that pirate's name to his favorite charity. Breaking pitch just missed. Full count of three and two. Our pirate broadcast crew consists of our producer, Ray Markoff, our director, David DeManna, Lanny Pateri, Jim Rooker, and me, John Sanders. And we certainly appreciate the help that Dave and Ray have given us all year long. Ground ball up the middle, base hit. Marvell win with a single to center. So thanks to David and Ray for all of their work this year. That's the first base hit since Tony Pena hit the home run the first inning. Sanderson walked Ray in the second. Now we finally have something going again. You know, the first inning was exciting, John, but since then the pitching has really come on strong, shut everybody down. Sometimes a big inning like that can almost leave you flat, can it? Mm -hmm. Johnny Ray will be the batter as Marvell is chased back by Welsh, who gives up his first hit. Only the fourth hit in the ballgame for the Pirates. We're in the top of the fifth inning. Johnny with a single, and he scored a run in the first. Walked in the second, so he's one for one. Johnny's average starting the night up to 277. Foul. And Montreal starts another left hander up in their bullpen. There you see him in the background, Dan Schatzeter. So Schatzeter is getting loose in the bullpen. Marvell on it first. Oliver will hold him. See if Johnny tries to butt again. No balls, one strike. One thing that has been less than acceptable on this road trip, and that would have to be the budding by our pitching staff. We've been in some situations where they simply haven't been able to get the job done. And you have to do those things. The little things help. And, you know, in this situation right here, the way the team is at this time of the year, you maybe change your strategies as a manager. I think for the most part this year, the Pirates as a team do not bunt that much. And with a four-run lead and trying to do it now is, in a sense, maybe going against their grain. But because these games mean so much, you try to score as many runs any way you can. And uh, if you get the advantage and can score some extra runs, do it, even if it's early. Bunts it foul again. One ball and two strikes, and Marvell Wynn will have to go back to first. You know, you get the five runs in the first inning, but you just can't sit back and expect that to hold up the entire ball game. Well, you hear that expression, momentum. It really does happen in, in every sport. And a team like Montreal, who has the firepower, they have the capability to come back and score some runs. If, if they get some long relief pitching that can hold the other club down and allow their team to get back in it, the possibilities are always there. The butt is off. He drives the ball into right center field. Francona makes up the ground and makes the catch. Wynn will go back to first. One out with one on here in the fifth inning. When we were in Chicago, John, uh, in a ballpark where you hear the term, you can never have too many runs in Chicago, and in a lot of cases that's true, uh, against the Montreal Ball Club. It doesn't matter what kind of park they play, and it could be said the same about the Expos. 
uh, because they can come back and score so many runs. But the, I think the one thing right now the Pirates might have to their advantage is the fact that they're getting a team that's a little bit flat. They just don't seem to be fired up, the Expos. And I guess after losing that doubleheader last night, who could blame them? Well, it takes a lot of wind out of your sails. Dave Parker is 0 for 2. Struck out and fly to left. Runner at first, another throw over. And if you're the Montreal Expos, realistically, you know you've got to almost win every game from here on out. And that means starting tonight. Harvell leaning a little bit, had to go back in head first. He makes it. And playing against a club that pretty much is in the same boat. The advantage the Pirates have, they get to play Philly three more games. Inside, Harvell will retreat. I don't know if you saw it a while ago, but Lanny lost his pitching stat book. I was list. laughing. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on over here, but it looked funny. Well, Stan Swartz, who is with RS Video, it's his truck and his crew, climbed down to get it. Thank you, Stan, very much. You saved Lanny's life. You realize that. He'd have never been at, able to complete the season. At the risk of his own. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. Wayne is picked off. Throw oh. to second, sails into left field. Marvell gets up but will not advance. So Al Oliver throws the ball away. They had him nailed and they could not complete the play. Well, first of all, it was kind of funny to see Marvell. He started to swing out into right field when he went to second base. Now, if we get the same angle, we'll wait and see. But Marvell, well, he sees that he's picked off. And all he's going to try and do is just get to second base. And the throw from Al Oliver, and this is probably the one problem Al does have, is his throwing arm. It's not a good one. And he simply throws the ball into left field. Now let's see if the Pirates can take advantage because Johnny Ray didn't get the sacrifice down. But same thing happens here with Marvell ending up at second base. So a chance for the Pirates to add one more to their total. Error on the first baseman. Well, they give a, a caught steal. Did they say caught stealing? Well, he didn't catch him, but it's an error. Just E3. We'll put it down that way. He can't did, be caught stealing. He did put caught stealing, but they didn't catch him. It is an error, though, on the first baseman. So the runner at second in scoring position for Dave Parker. Wynn goes back as Welsh spins, but does not throw. The Pirates scored five times in the first, trying to add to that here in the top of the fifth. 5 1 ball game. Parker, a little roller. Wynn will have to retreat. There's the throw to first. And it is in time for out number two. One of the things that Oliver does at first that I don't understand sometimes is that he always or many times will go behind the base to take a throw rather than stretching out. And I well, wonder why he does that. I think on this one here the throw from Welch and we'll watch it here. Watch when Welch throws the ball by the way he's flat footed he looks to third back to second and watch this. He kind of gets flat footed and really doesn't get his body going into the throw and I think he threw it a little bit on the inside part of the bag so. Scoops had to shift to make sure that he stayed on the bag. Now, if he goes one foot and tries to make that play, he might not be able to do it. Two outs, runner at second for Jason Thompson. He's 0 for 1 officially, walked and scored in the first. Breaking pitch catches the corner. Which brings up another good uh, reason why he doesn't stretch out a lot, John, is because Al is basically a one foot first baseman. He'll plant one foot right away and step out rather than get his heels on the bag and shift, and that's how he gets caught. So you really do have a good point right there. No balls one strike to Jason runner in scoring position. Way outside Ramos is able to go out and get it. It's Marvell win at second he singled and moved up on the throwing error by Al Oliver. You know some first baseman might say well why don't you wait till the ball is on its way and then step with the one foot right at the ball and a lot of times you can't do that because it's to one side of the bag or the other. Brown ball up the middle base hit. Here comes Marvell win around third. Lawson's throw to the plate. Not in time. Pirates lead it six to one. A two out RBI single for Jason Thompson. And that becomes a very very big run there. Let's watch the pitch from Welch. It looks like a breaking ball. He didn't get it away. Not at least far enough. And Jason who earlier in the year and for the most part of the year has been pulling off that pitch. He stayed with it and hit it into center field. Dawson makes a strong throw here but Marvell is just too fast. Mike Eastler who had a grand slam in the first will be the batter for Jason RBI number 71. 
Mike Eastler's RBI total up to 54 now. He's had two grand slams since coming back from the thumb injury that put him on the disabled list. Breaking pitch misses. Ball one. Two hits here in the inning. The error helped out. And whether or not it's an earned run will depend on what Mike Eastler does. And Jason needs one more hit now for career number or hit number 1,000. 999 and counting. And he'll get another at bat in this game, so maybe he'll do it tonight. Philly scored a run on the top of the second inning, John. It's two to nothing. Philadelphia over St. Louis. And the Dodgers coming back. Scored two in the top of the fifth. They now lead five to two over Atlanta. Now the St. Louis, it's one nothing, right? Yeah, what did okay. I say? Two? Yeah. Okay, one nothing Philadelphia over the Cardinals after two innings. Come on, Redbirds. That caught the corner for a strike, two and one. Everybody's saying, what happened to St. Louis? They just kind of faded on pitching. the road trip. Pitching. Their pitching just didn't do it for them this year. Down too low, three and one to Mike Eastler. We talk about it so many times, and people might get tired of hearing about it, but that's basically what it is. It's your pitching that wins it or loses it for you. Still a giant eagle jackpot inning for Bernard Rulick of Pittsburgh. Full count of three and two. Mike hit his grand slam in the first, his tenth home run of the year, and he struck out in the third, batting here in the fifth with Jason Thompson at first to run in for the Pirates. Payoff pitch coming up. Mike Eastler, base hit left field, so the hitman is two for three. Thompson will stop at second. Talk about serving a hit out into left field. You just saw an instructor's way to do it. Let's watch Mike keep his head on the ball and look at the way he serves the ball into left field. He just goes with it, plants that right foot. His body's a little bit pulled the other way, but look where his head is. That's the key, watching the ball. And for Welsh, the key is the fact that he started getting his pitches up a little bit more this inning. Earlier, he had been keeping them down and he retired the first six men that he faced until Marvell went got a base hit. The ball kept getting a little bit higher. And uh, credit also Mike Easter as we're going to bring in Dan Schatzeter here. The fact that he didn't try to pull that pitch, he went with it and went for the base hit rather than trying to drive the ball in the gap or hit it over the fence. Right. You hear those, you hear that expression, adjustments, and your good hitters make adjustments. Uh, sometimes it's with every time at bat, at other times it's with each pitch. And Mike, just like Jason, when they become good hitters, better hitters, they start hitting the ball up the middle and the other way. So both Thompson and Eastler, Jason's case to center and Mike going the other way on a pretty good pitch. So we get a run here and, and they make a double switch. We'll bring in the new pitcher, the left hander, Schatzeter. For Dan, it is his 57th appearance of the year. His record is five and two. He has a couple of saves and a 3.07 earned run average. Also checking into the lineup defensively. Is number four, Chris Spire. Spire will be at third base. So we'll juggle the batting order, Rook, and what's it going to look like? Well, the fact that uh, Wallach batted, well, he made the last out, so they'll put Schatzeter in the number five spot, and they'll probably put Spire in the number nine spot. Okay. That's my guess. Every time we do it, I guess yeah, wrong. No. I'm waiting till they come to bat. <laughs> it's a good way to do it. Wait and see who steps up there, then you know, right? Uh -huh. But the whole purpose for making the two for one switch is to put the pitcher spot back in the number nine spot in the order, which they have effectively done. You're taking a little power out of your lineup in terms of Wallach, but. Uh... Well, Bill Burns at the point right now where he has to try and stop what's happening as far as the Pirates are concerned here in the fifth inning, maybe. And then the fact uh, maybe giving Wallach a little bit of a rest. It's been a long year and. This game not over with. It's a six to one game, but obviously things are in the Pirates' favor. So give him a night off for the rest of the night. Tony Pena had a solo home run in the first as a home run cut comes up empty. No balls, one strike, two on, two out, one in for the Pirates here in the fifth inning. They lead it six to one. Bernard Rolick of Pittsburgh is still batting in our Giant Eagle jackpot inning. See if Tony can set the table for $700 in Giant Eagle groceries for him. Pirates have six hits.
Down too low. Welch gets credit for working two and two thirds innings. He gave up three hits, one strikeout. One run so far. The other two runners are his responsibility. So Schatzeter takes over. It into center field. Dawson on the move, on the move, in time. The inning is over. Three hits for the Pirates. They come up with a run. We did not have a home run, but no losers here for Bernard Rolick. We have certificates for 24 12 ounce cans of Pepsi free, certificates redeemable at your grocer, and we have one more. When we play again, our jackpot will be up to $800. When the Expos come up, we'll see Francona, Flynn, and Ramos. Pirates by five. One glass of milk has enough calcium and protein to help the average dad through an ordinary day. But who has ordinary days? Wow! Milk's got four of what you need to get you on your way. Milk helps keep you going, charging on through your day. That extra glass of milk every day gives you more of what you need to take on those everyday little surprises. You've always known that Giant Eagle's a great place to save. But what you may not know is that it's now a great place to withdraw, deposit, and more. Giant Eagle presents Cash Stream, the machine that lets you do your banking where you do your shopping. This one machine lets you withdraw, deposit, check your balance, and much more because it connects you with your account at over 50 banks around town. But it's only available at one major supermarket in town, Giant Eagle. Cash Stream. Now, you don't have to go to the bank to go to the bank. It's a long drive going foul. If your transmission's gone foul after a long drive, see your local Amco dealer. The pennant's within reach. Go for it, Bucks. Welcome back to Olympic Stadium in Montreal. I'm John Sanders along with Jim Rooker and Lanny Frateri. Fifth inning coming up, Francona, Flynn, and Ramos for Bill Verdon and the Expos. Pirates lead it by five. It's six to one. Probably had about the same expression on his face last night as his team lost a doubleheader to the Phillies. The Phillies have taken an early second inning lead, won nothing over the Cardinals in St. Louis. Chuck Tanner with his lineup card, talking to Harvey Haddix. Grant Jackson to the far right. You couldn't tell who that other player was. I think that was Bob Ochenko. Here's Terry Francona. Fly to right his first time up. When Warren Cromartie was injured, Francona got a lot more playing time. Terry was very unhappy early in the season because he wasn't playing at all. Now Cromartie's unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> well, the guy who's not playing is always unhappy, right? Exactly. We're in the fifth. Francona fouls it away over the Pirate dugout. Broden coming into the fifth inning has struck out three and walked one. He's allowed one run. You're right. That is Ochenko with Rod Scurry then on the other side of Grant. And Tony Bartiron. Along with Kent Biggerstaff, you know, Lanny and I were talking about the job that uh, they've done in keeping the pitchers healthy this year. Ground ball to second. Johnny Ray throws out Francona. And you have to give them a lot of credit because certain pitchers go through a certain routine, a certain ritual. Uh, there are times when you almost depend on the trainer to, to get you ready. Uh, maybe it's not so much physical as it is mental, huh? That's true. Everybody's different. There you see Kent Biggerstaff and Bartiron, Milt May, and Doug Froble. We'll get them all in before the night's over, maybe. By the way, Judy Foley's mother celebrated her birthday the other day, and we didn't get a chance to say happy birthday to Edith Sunday last Tuesday. And <laughs> Judy and John Foley are here. I came in on the plane with them. Here's Warren Cromartie up off the bench to bat for Doug Flynn, fouls it back. So the Expos go to the bench. Cromartie is in. Breaking pitch is popped down the left field line. It'll get back over the Pirate dugout and out of play. Tony Pena took a look. Will he be in an Expo uniform next year? Many people say no. You might see a lot of changes next year. If Philly doesn't hang on 
they may have some change and I think they'll have they're going to have some anyway but if they don't hang on and win their Eastern Division you might see a lot of changes over there. What about the speculation that Pete Rose will not be re-signed by the Phillies. That wouldn't surprise me. Wonder where he'd go back to Cincinnati maybe. One ball two strikes one out. Breaking pitch outside two and two. I saw an article in a Toronto paper today which indicated that the Blue Jays are very interested in Rod Scurry. Of course, Rod Scurry's name has been mentioned in deals with some other ball clubs as well. Full count, three and two. Of course, this is the time of year you can do it. You can speculate on almost anything. Speculation in the New York papers Tuesday morning when we were there that Chuck Tanner might be a candidate for the Yankee job. <laughs> You know, I didn't see that, but it's, I have to laugh right off the bat. It's true. And the speculation centered around the fact that he uh, knows Murray Cook very well, who's now with the Yankees. Well, if, if that's the case, I, you know what I really think it would be? The, the Yankees are more interested in Chuck than the other way around. Man at first, second walk by Rick Roden in the game. Bobby Ramos, the catcher now. With Cromarty at first and one out. Pirates lead it six to one. Ramos batting 218. Popped up to Jason Thompson his first time up. Way outside from Roden. Here's a guy that's a backup catcher that kind of stuck his neck out last night. A few of the Expos after the doubleheader loss said things look very bad. Ramos came out and said, I think we've lost it. Well, there were about 47,000 other people in the ballpark last night who felt the same way. Well, you still have to go out there and grind it out. They're not out of it till they're out of it. Thank you, Yogi. <laughs> well, I think if you you have to have that attitude. A roller. Hebner cuts in front of Barra, gets the out at second. That's it. Five to four on the fielder's choice. Ramos at first and Cromartie back to the dugout. Now Chris Spire batting for the first time. Two for one swap when the pitching change was made in the top half of this inning. Put Chris Spire at third. Chris Spire, a man with a lot of major league experience. There have been several times, including this year, when people sounded the death knell as far as his baseball career is concerned, but he just refuses to go away. Well, here's a here's a fellow that uh, might be somewhere else next year too, John. He can still play some shortstop. Good pitch by Roden. Spire is kind of out of the Tim Foley mold or Foley out of the Spire mold. They're basically the same kind of shortstops. They'll do anything they can to beat you. And they play a solid shortstop for you. Down the right field line, that will be out of play. By the way, Philadelphia added another run. It, now it's two to nothing. I guess maybe I had <laughs> what ESP. It's two to nothing after two and a half innings. Philly on top of St. Louis. Spire at the plate, no balls and two strikes to him. That's Ramos at first. Reached on a fielder's choice. Roden's pitch outside for Spire. It all started back in 1971 with the Giants. Was with the Giants until 77 when he split time between San Francisco and Montreal. Best year in the big leagues was 75 when he batted 271. Now it's even at two and two. Couple more afternoon games. A lot of day games on this road trip, huh, Rook? Well, a couple in Chicago, one in New York, two here. This time of the year, with this cool weather, I think the players like to play in day games. As long as it's not every day. Spire hits it into center field. Marvell Wynn on the move, on the move. Makes the play. 
Side retired, a walk, a man left, but no runs in the bottom of the fifth. We'll go to the Pirates' sixth. It's the bottom third of the order. Win in the Bucks, running ahead of Montreal. Tony Pena and the troops leading six to one. This buds for the team behind the U.S. Olympic team, the coaches and the trainers. The Olympics take teamwork, and Budweiser is proud to be part of that team. This Bud's for you. For Sheriff Duval, whose car lacked the pickup to make the pickup, there's Gulf Super Unleaded, the gas with guts. For Morton Mitchell, who demands the right gas, but at the right price, Gulf Self-Service makes more sense for less sense. For the Millers, whose car ran on and on, Gulf's extra octane helps stop engine run on. Gulf, everything we do makes driving better for you. From Olympic Stadium, the Pirates leading it here, six to one, as we go to the top half of the sixth inning. And let's go see the Bucks in 84. You know, it's not too early to order your 84 Pirates season tickets. A great way to entertain your clients your friends and family all summer long. The Pirates do have a season ticket plan to suit your needs at an affordable price. There's sure to be plenty of thrills and excitement at Three Rivers again next year, so why not call 323-5028 and ask for further details on Pirates season tickets. Come see the Bucks in 1984. That's 323-5028. We have a new second, or rather a new shortstop, a genus Salazar. Now, when we were here the last time, everyone was calling him Angel Salazar. His mother found out about that and called to say, no, that's not correct. His name is a genus, and that's what he's going to be called. Whatever mama wants, mama gets. So Salazar is the new shortstop. Pencil him in the number seven spot in the order. Dromarty pinch hit for Flynn. Inside to Richie Hebner, who drops his bat. Richie is 0 for 2. Did you hear him yell? <laughs> he yelled before. He thought he was going to get hit. <laughs> I like that. Fouls it away. Schatzeter came on in the fifth inning to get the final out. That run, by the way, to Welsh, I believe has to be an earned run because of the fact that Mike Easter got the base hit. Look at this. Richie's yelling right about <laughs> now, and he almost did get hit. <laughs> one and one to the hack. Oh, he hit himself that time. Greatest shiner of shoes. That's his military training. <laughs> Former Marine. Seems like every time I see him in the clubhouse, he's shining somebody's shoes. Still one ball and two strikes. A five run first inning for the Pirates. Grand slam for Mike Eastler. Solo home run for Tony Pena. The Expos coming up with a run in the bottom half of the inning. Driven in on a triple by Al Oliver, but that's been it in the hit category. Oh, that time he did get hit. You heard him yell. A repeat performance, Rook. Yeah, that one got him on the right shoulder. Schatzeter kept going inside, outside, inside, outside on Richie, and then tried to run that last one up and in. Let's watch it. Richie doesn't have a chance here and just tries to get out of the way, but it's too late. That's Hurts. He's all right, though. He's tough. Pat, you hear that? He's all right, Pat. <laughs> See, there he is. He's laughing about it. Nobody out. Hebner at first. Bear of the batter. Dale has flied to center twice. Batting 254. He has 10 homers, 51 runs batted in. Dale drives it into center field, base hit. Hebner at second will stop. So Barra picks up the base hit, number seven for the Pirates. First hit off Schatzeter. And the Bucks again have something going here in the sixth inning. And again, the Montreal bullpen will start to heat up. Well, we talked earlier about the, the sacrifice bunt. 
There you see Barger going down to get warmed up. But here's a situation where Montreal obviously will be looking for it. And they'll try to defense it right off the bat. Now you, you're playing on the artificial surface. The ball is a little bit livelier, but you, you might try to pick a spot where when you're in this kind of a situation, you want to make the third baseman feel the ball, make him commit himself. And Chuck Tanner might give Rick the green light if they charge a swing away. Runners at first and second, nobody on. There's the play, throw it a second, almost got into center field. Shortstop moving away from second, and the second baseman Little moving in behind the runner. Now there it is. Looked like yeah. Little was a little late, didn't it? Roden at the plate. Rick has flied to center two times. In this inning, Richie Hefner hit by a pitch, and Dale Barra base hit. Runners at first and second, nobody out. Too low. Roden backs away from it. One ball and no strikes. That's a tough pitch to butt down there, I would think. That's where you want to keep the ball. Get it down. Or try to get it over. They played three innings in St. Louis, by the way, John. Still two to nothing. And the Dodgers doing a number on the Braves. Ten to two. That's after five and a half innings. Dodgers could turn out the lights this weekend for all intents and purposes in Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Roden does not show butt, swings away. Fly ball to deep left field. Back to the warning track is Reigns. He has room. Hebner will tag and go to third. Here's the throw. And Richie's out. I think Hebner tried to steal a base and was not able to do it. Well, what happened? You watch the ball. Now, Reigns really is not getting in a good position there. Catches the ball then, but what happened? Richie went back to tag up at the very last moment he did that. So he really wasn't there waiting for the catch to be made and then get a good jump. It was like starting, stopping, and starting again. And once you do that, it's like a hesitation. You're lost. So he went ahead and took the gamble. Reigns does not throw that well, by the way. If he would have been in position, Richie would have been tagging ahead of and then he might have been able to get to third. Marvell went at a base hit his last time up. Marvell has scored a couple of runs in the game, walked and scored in the first, singled and scored in the fifth inning. 